Collins being in the Creek Town Council of Order. At this time, we'll have a uh, brief moment of silence. Council of Town Crew will hold a public hearing on October 10, 2017 at 7 p.m. or soon thereafter as it may be held at the Crew Library and Conference Center. The Town Council will take public comment regarding Article 4, Chickens and Other Fowl. The revised ordinance will allow for regulated keeping of chickens and town limits. The full revised ordinance including all limits and regulations is posted at the Town Office. Interested persons may appear at the aforementioned time and place to present their views. It is a town of crew's intention to comply with the ADA, accommodations for disabled persons, uh, etc. and so forth can, can be uh, had by contacting the town manager. I have the proposed ordinance under consideration. It's pretty lengthy. Do you want me to read it or have you guys seen it in the paper? I saw it. It's not familiar. It's veterinarian No, it's good. <laughs> yeah, it is good, but it's good. All right, with that in mind, then I will not read it, but I will pass this around if anybody wants to take a visual. I have read it, so I'm going to take it from you, please. Thank you. At this time, we are taking comments. Is there anyone who wishes to comment on the chicken rights? Well, I'm just here to support it. Okay. And I'm here against it. <laughs> I'm, I'm here. I'm here to support it. I've got I've got five acres of land in the town of Crew, and I don't see any reason why I shouldn't be able to have. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. What's your name? Kathy Kingery. Kathy. K I N G E R Y. E R Y. Mm -hmm. All right. Let's start with Miss Vic first. Did you, did you want to? I just think the um the ordinance is good. It, it sounds good when I read the paper, and um. People are moving towards more organic and healthy food, and I think that position that the camera crew had chickens is a good position. Okay, I'll come back to you, Lori. Ms. Kramer, do you have anything to say? Um, as someone who has free range chickens outside of town limits, um, there will be a lot of resources needed based on your requirements as written to manage this. And I have been to these meetings before and heard the resource constraints that we're under. And as a tax paying member of Nottaway and I, I, I don't see it as viable. Do you, do you live in the town group? I live just outside the group. Okay, all right. Why, but why do you say it's not viable? Due to if you were to enforce it the way it's written, that's going to take some resources. Yeah, but go ahead. Go ahead. That's probably why a lot of people won't get it. Yeah. <laughs> Mayor, if I if I may ask the uh, gentlelady question. Sure. Uh -huh. um, so your opposition is not for allowing chickens; it's for allowing chickens based on the regulations that are written. I believe the regulations are required. Uh, based on the demographics that we have. My problem is to enforce those requirements is going to eat up some resources. Okay. okay. Good enough. Sir, what's your name? My name is Ralph Vick. Ralph Vick. Okay. And what did you have to say? Well, you know, I, I, have, uh, I have a big plot of land in the town of Crew, five acres. You know, I think I got plenty of room for chickens. I think the way that the, the town bylaws are written, I could actually have a cow in my yard 
because yeah. it has to be 100 feet from the residence, 100 feet from the road, mm -hmm. and I've got that. So if I can have a cow in my yard, I think you know chickens would be a little more reasonable. Actually, anybody can have a cow as long as it's on a concrete slab. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's um, for real, for real. You were talking about revising ordinances to like close holes and stuff. That's probably one. That's probably one of them. <laughs> and if I could just piggyback on that, what I didn't see, or at least I don't recall seeing, are any lot size restrictions. I mean, five acres makes sense to me. Sure. But if you live on, you know, a city lot, fifty foot. <clears throat> I mean, that's a little different. Are you at May's old place, May Yes, yeah, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. My brother's experience with the chicken was there. Uh, I knew that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, so your, your main thing then is that, that the lot's probably not big enough and that maybe we need to re rework the ordinance a little to make it more enforceable. Correct. Right. And, and more manageable with fewer resources. With fewer resources. Uh, do you have any suggestions based on what you've read? I live on 25 acres. I don't know. I don't have any. Okay. Can you, can, you, uh, can you be more specific then in what you think are going to be problems? Do you want it? I've got it in my hand. I don't know if rep, sometimes well, referencing it on paper rather than your head. Sure. Um, well, what struck me was um, a tag and, you know, you can let them out for exercise. Did I read that? But no, no, they have to have a run, which is part of you know part of the coop. And okay. you have your coop, and then and then you have a run. Okay. Um, what's also required is that you have to take a class in you know. I think what she's talking about is it said something like if you want to let your chickens out of the cage and run around, if you were there present, you know, watching them. I, I thought that's the way that. I that's the way it. I read it. And I'm well, like. You know, like I said, I, you know, I got five acres. It'd be nice to watch the chickens run around, but yeah, we don't need chickens I, running around the street. I understand. I understand yeah. fine. I'm, I'm, yeah, I mean, I understand where you're coming from. Yeah. I'm just thinking about people in town, you know, where the yeah. houses are. They're close, already you know. there, though. They are. That's what I'm saying. I, I now live on more land, but I live right where are we at? Right behind Town Hall by the bank, and I drive a school bus all through town. I can't tell you how many chickens yeah, I come we've, across. We've been I'm, but I'm saying they're it's they're there. they're there, and a lot of times if I have lived next to chickens and not even known I live next to chickens if they're done right. Yeah. Yeah. So that's that is another point. If they're already currently there and we're not running into issues now, having it legal. Other than them being illegal. Yeah. Other than them being illegal, having it legal, I mean, you're likely to also not run into issues. Like this. Things probably aren't going to change that much. But she's seeing them running in the street. Well, I have. I mean, it's not like an everyday okay. thing, but I'm saying because I might, because of my job, which has changed this school year, but because of my job, I might run around in and out of streets more than most people. Sure. You know, because of that, I mean, I can tell you hot spots where they're at. Y'all know, but, no, you I know. I don't know. I don't know either way. Well, let me, let me add, are, now, are you for or against chickens? I'm for them. Okay. And what's your name? My name is Jennifer Madden, M-A-D-O-N. Okay, but you don't live in town anymore. No, I do. I live in, um, I live on the opposite oh, corner okay. of Steve. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. All right. As, as to address one of her concerns, it's no reason why they couldn't double the price of the tag for the chicken to maybe help out with the resources that you may need that was brought up. to, yeah. you know, yeah. To enforce the laws that, that, that you have written. I, did I overlook? I know it said something about posting the license on the coop. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's what it's what, five dollars. But is it going to be something like this size and blazing orange that if a police officer was driving by my backyard, he could see that it was on my coop? You know, that's a good idea. I mean, yeah, what I mean, resource yeah. would it take if they're already patrolling the street? Sure. If it can be seen, mm -hmm. if it's you know. I don't know. School buses are a special color. Why can't the paper be a special color? Just a thought. I mean, I mean, obviously, if it's this big, like a dog tag, you're not going to see that. People are going to have to get out and go up to it. You laminate it, and it's waterproof. Wouldn't it almost also fall under any other animal ordinance on a complaint basis? To a certain extent. Some holes in them too. What is your What is your name? Uh, Jess. Last name? Fox. Fox. Okay. 
Um, does member, any members of council have any questions? I, 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 I've never had the whole audience here for one issue before. Kind of interesting. <laughs> Well, uh, you know, I would, and we talked a little bit um, later. I would like to give some more thought before we finalize anything um, to the fee, because that that was brought up at the last, at the end of the last meeting. That five dollars really wasn't very much, um, and I'd like to consider lot sizes as well before we make a final. Can I ask a question on that? And this might be something I haven't been, I wasn't able to come to the last meeting because normally Mondays are not good for me. Um, but when under the, the coop location and construction, it, I mean, it says that it has to be 15 feet from any dwelling or adjacent lot. I mean, yeah. doesn't lot size. I mean, obviously if you've got a house on a small lot and you've got extra outbuildings and all, that alone is going to make it so that if you can't meet those 15-foot requirements, then you're out of luck. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I'd lot like size would... It. Yeah, we, we need to look at it. We've got two different standard lot sizes here, right? Mm -hmm. So we need, to, we need to accommodate probably the smallest one, and that probably needs to be reviewed, I agree. Uh, Just one follow-up question, and, and I, maybe I read it, but I don't recall. Are they allowed in the front yard like cows, or is it a backyard? Okay. Okay. No roosters, yeah. no front and, yard. And there's a limit to four hens. Okay. Anything else that we didn't cover? I like to that y'all put in there that people have to go learn about how to oh, take care of chickens yeah, before awesome. they do, especially because I read up on it a little bit, and the SBCA has been getting a lot of chickens because people buy chicks. And they grow up and they're like, oh, this isn't a hen, this is a rooster. And they have to take it and do something okay. with it. Who gets credit for that? You or the attorney? Oh, okay. well, yeah. yeah. Another concern I have yeah, there, too, are the increases mm -hmm. they're showing in the medical community and, and, and salmonella in children. And they're attributing it to um, backyard chicken coops. So well, you need to know. There, there was a rise in uh, salmonella because people were allowing their children and themselves to cuddle their chickens, mm -hmm. which, I mean, as long as you're going in to, you know, this chickenry kind of situation, um, you should be educated as to what the risks are and not allow you or your children to snuggle your chickens. They're not, they're not pets. I mean, right. They only lay eggs for about three years and they live for seven, so, you know, mm. you got to figure out something to do with them after about three years. Check this out. Mm, you can't slaughter them in town. No, but I can go to her house. But I'm just that, kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Is that, a new order? is that an ordinance now? Like, can people slaughter chickens? In, I know you can't have chickens in town, but you can bring a live chicken home and slaughter the chicken. Not supposed to. I, didn't know I don't remember was, seeing don't it remember in the seeing. animal ordinance. Well, section. I guess it's covered in the fact that you're not supposed to bring the live right. chicken in the yeah, first place. Right. Uh -huh. that, that would be implied that you can't then kill a chicken. <laughs> you're not, I'm not say supposed if you go to have. somebody's house, like, you're not supposed to have these chickens. You're just like, okay, well, well, I don't have them anymore. They're going in the pan. Well, that happens. I, I, I know. I, I, I know. I've, I've seen that. So I'm glad that that's part of the ordinance as well. This lady's got some good points. Yes. <clears throat> because how do we know somebody's hand class? Well, I mean, wouldn't that be... How you, do we know how many chickens they have? Well, it says that I have supposed, to provide proof to you. Yeah, so you would go to the class. That's what it right. says on this. You would okay. apply for your I'm permit. Mm -hmm. You would get... You could even have an expe inspection of the coop in order to obtain your permit to get yeah. its resources. Yeah. And I'll tell you, we moved to this area uh, less than two years ago from Chesterfield where they had passed the back for chickens and there was a limit of five hens and I had lots of neighbors who had 15 and 20. And it's a resource mm -hmm. problem. Mm -hmm. And we had officers in our neighborhood who said, I ain't got time for that. Mm -hmm. Well, you're right. And yeah. there, these people who are here are not going to be the problem. No. Because they wouldn't be here if they, they're going to do exactly what they're supposed to do. And they have five acres. I bet they're well, that kind of thought if we didn't have five acres. I mean, I have other, you know, friends and family in town that would really love to have chickens. Um, you know, it would benefit them. And that was kind of the whole whole thing that sparked this whole thing. Are people that live in town that do live on not small lots, but smaller lots than what, what we have. And, you know, 
but they, you know, I think the real main purpose is to do it smart and humane and, you know, we're not trying to have chickens running around like get killed in the streets. Well, again, I'll go back to what she said. What if there are people out there that aren't doing what they're supposed to do? There's, 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 there's always there. going to be people doing what they're not Somebody's supposed to. Somebody's going to have to address that. You know, there's... there's my, well, I don't want my police riding around looking for place guards all the time. I, I don't... And you have to have the I don't think you have to. I don't think you do. Because you have... In the past, you've had what, what they call these... From what I understand, they used to have these citizen block watches. They would watch, watch or whatever it is. That could be the same thing. Yeah. Volunteer chicken monitors. Right. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, I think that sounds funny to say that volunteer chicken monitors, but I think those of us who want them are, and want them legally are willing if to. If I that. know you're my neighbor and you've got twenty, and you doing that is going to risk me not being able to have it, I just might make a call about that, not to bring you know, so that I don't lose my right. So what do we do with the 15 extra chickens that this person had? So okay, it, it, how about flag. my house was used for surveillance <laughs> for a town that, that person answer my question. No, you can't who, had, who had chickens. They weren't supposed to. And they used my yard to watch it. And those people were told they had X amount of days to remove them. Right. And what they did with them was <clears throat> their problem. Like they found homes for these chickens slaughtered them. I don't know what they did because it wasn't my problem. Suppose they don't. Well, then that's where your ordinance has to say they're confiscated, which they're fined, they're... Yeah. Which is the that's where the problem goes, once we confiscate them. We do. And not only that, you can go to Tractor Supply, you can go to Southern States, you can go and they were supposed to be sexed. And I know for a fact you're going to get roosters. Mm -hmm. So what do you do with those? Well, that's what happened with my son. <laughs> he had six chickens. Okay. Uh, he had some runner Okay. Oh, yeah, I'll I'll explain this whole story to you about these chickens. Out of six, it was five roosters. Mm -hmm. Supposed to have been six hens, right? Happens. Okay, so we go, out, I go. I help him build a coop and everything, but his his coop is actually a whole lot bigger than what we're going to require. Ours is going to be just look like you should buy a big tractor supply, something small that they, you know, and and well Brent had them and the next day I know a dog goes in there and kills two of his chickens. Alright? Cops are up at state I mean county people are up at. Uh, you gotta you gotta repair the pen, you gotta replace the chickens. And he got a misdemeanor charge against him. Alright, that happened. Then he lately dog got back in the pen. I mean this got dog wire around it. Killed, killed every one of them. Oh. Except, except for the rooster. So and yeah, Brent killed the rooster. That was mean. We already had foxes. Yeah, they're already here. So. And possums and raccoons and everything else. Yeah, no, but you know, but cats like yeah, yeah, well, well, something like this happens, it goes back to resources. We might send a cop out there and say, well, the, the, a dog went in your chicken coop. Well, or the neighbor stole my chicken and they ate it. And yeah, it. I mean, well, that, that could be possible. It's, but it's, it's, you know what I'm saying? But you know, just like she said, resources, and see, we fought this battle last council meeting, you know, and we had the people from Nottoway in, they gave us all this, the statistics on everything about chickens, and all other fowl, you know what I'm saying? And, um, well, we luckily, you know, we dismissed it, we didn't, we didn't pass it, because I think it was a right big majority. Uh, Bill and me, and you, and Steve, were the only two that really voted for it. Uh, no, sorry, no, uh, just a point of clarification, that was on the table indefinitely. It wasn't voted on. I thought, we, I thought, I thought we took year, it, it was definitely table. Table. Uh, I thought we voted on bees. Oh, we did we have to Hey, we have to have chickens, didn't we? No, not since I don't I found out just recently, though, that my chickens weren't right. just for laying eggs. There was a guy that she met, and that I met also, that uh, was a veteran and had PTSD. And he had chickens when he moved here, and he had chickens, and he had to get rid of them because you know somebody complained. And, but he said they were therapeutic to him, you know. Also, they were you know his therapeutic animals. I know you're telling me you talked about. I had a long conversation with him. Yeah, so, yeah. It's also eat snakes and uh, and ticks. And ticks mm -hmm. carry Lyme disease, which can be a uh, very devastating thing. Yeah. And mosquitoes. Oh, man, I think we have to table this for this for this point. I'm, I'm getting I'm, I'm getting labored because uh, what's going to happen is you're going to have 
the people that want it are going to have rebuts. The people that don't want it are going to have rebuts about that. And it's going to be a no-win situation until it's clarified. Mr. Fox, I didn't want to shut anybody up. That was on. Uh, I, was, I was getting ready to do that. I got no we've problem got, with we've that. got several issues. We've got lot sizes. We've got fees that need to be readdressed. We've got the educational aspect of it for owners uh, that has to be mandated to somehow address salmonella. Nobody's talked to the health department regarding this issue, to my knowledge. And all of these issues have to be addressed. And um, what we will do is table, the, we will obviously move it to the next phase, which is to, to find more information on these issues uh, so the council can keep that in consideration. Uh, One other concern I have is that it still keeps appearing in the paper that the Nottawa County animal control problems have not mm -hmm. been straightened out. And I hate to add another layer to oh. that until that is settled. Sure. I'm not saying whether I'm totally against the idea, but I, I hope that that can be settled before. Because there is the issue of if you confiscate birds, what? It, it sounds like y'all are already having an issue of spending resources on this chicken thing anyway, regardless of whether you pass this or not. And, and you know, if you did pass it, you would at least be getting some funding to go towards the research that's why, that that's you're already That's why I like using. the idea of talking about. Yeah. And one of the things that we also need to review is spot zoning. If you've got five acres of land that just happens to sit in the town crew right on the head, I mean, that. I mean, yeah, I was going to say, if you can, you know, look yeah. at, if you're looking at sizes of lots, like say, if you got over five acres, yeah, you can have a chicken, you know. Yeah, yeah but, 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 I mean, that's not fair to everybody else. I mean, else Steve, that means Steve well. can't have chickens. Or Phil. Yeah. Um, <laughs> 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 I'm going to have lots. I'm going to have lots. But you're not near town lots. I know you are. He said right on the edge. I have three she mentioned something earlier maybe about the demographics and, and living in Chesterfield and people have a lot of chickens, but I'm thinking, you know, we got a little bit of lower income than Chesterfield. People are not going to have 20 chickens. you got to feed 20 chickens. Yeah. Yeah. You know, just like I don't have a cow because they eat a lot. You know? <laughs> yeah, we're well, well, that pasture clean <laughs> where you wouldn't have to push all the chickens. Yeah. I, I cut it with a lawnmower. If nobody has anything to add, what I will do then is just close the public hearing. We've got we've got the vote count for the people that are here, and then we've got these issues that we're going to have to research and address. Yes, ma'am. If you may, if you um, change the lot size, there's only like two or three people that can have that have a few chickens, isn't it? Yeah, make it like five acres. But if you feel well, like black yeah. those guys at 200 feet, there ain't nobody crew gonna have something at all. <laughs> and I got eight acres dead in my bottom. Sammy. Yeah, Sammy too, but yeah. Sammy Joe ain't gonna mess with the chicken. I think we closed the public hearing. Yeah, the public hearing okay. is now closed. I just wanted to make one comment to Mr. Vick. I have not met you before, but your grandmother and your grandfather were two of the greatest people that lived in Crow as far as I'm concerned. Bean, Bean Shorter was a, was a founder of the Crew Volunteer Fire Department, Navy veteran of World War II, and a civic minded individual was running calls, I guess, up to the day he died. 82. Right? 82. 82. <laughs> He used to take me on those calls a lot. You know, he, he pretty much retired the year I was born and, and raised me. You know, he was my hero, as well as all those things you said. They were good people. Thank you. Thank you. And I used, when I got roosters for Easter, uh, well, I got potato chicks, and all of them were roosters except for one, and they chased Greg. <laughs> <laughs> I had to get rid of them. I was about two. I was about two years old. <laughs> Probably deserved it, don't you think? Probably. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the age two. Yeah. Everyone's welcome to stay for the rest of the meeting. What is the rest of the meeting? Uh, we got lots of stuff. Oh, wow. Oh, really? It's a regular town meeting? Yeah. Yes. Oh, I didn't realize. <laughs> it's Tuesday. I thought they were on Mondays. Yes, the day was on Oh, oh yeah. yeah. All right. Uh, if this time yeah, you don't want just this. Oh, <laughs> okay. Are you being facetious? Yeah. <laughs> we'll be here for 30 minutes because the uh, voice comes on me at 8. Yes, it does. All right, so the hearing is closed. At this time, we go to the delegations uh, from the public and citizens' comments. If you have anything that you want to say. Yes, I'd like to follow up on the sign ordinance that I brought up a couple of uh, meetings ago. I uh, contacted, I went on the website, I contacted Town Hall, I sent emails. I cannot find the sign ordinance. And that's under discussion and you want to handle right. it? Right. Mayor, let me, uh, if I can address that. Um, I did draft an ordinance uh, dealing with um, 
several restrictions to signs. Uh, it went to the Infrastructure Committee, who decided uh, that it wasn't necessary. Then it went to the Economic Development Committee, who decided that the only necessary component at this point would be to um, require maintenance of signs. Um, because there are several constitutional issues in what we can or cannot allow on signs. Anything that speaks to content uh, speaks to the First Amendment, which we can, uh, can't regulate. Uh, what we can regulate are uh, placement, um, condition. condition, length of time, um, and size. Uh, anything other than that speaks to content and we, we can't address it. So we did um, talk about, and I uh, proposed a draft on um, maintenance. Uh, at the last meeting, we, uh, we discussed and the issue of does the maintenance already currently fall under the building code. Uh, the town attorney looked into it and it, uh, just informed me before the meeting that it does not. So we'll be, uh, we'll be discussing that at Right. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Anything else? All right, good. Now we go to the consent calendar. Uh, <clears throat> matters on the consent calendar are considered routine and will be approved in one motion. Any item can be removed from the calendar to request to a member of council. It might be voted on separately. These include the minutes of the town council meeting held on 11 September 2017, the bill sheet, and the additions. The additions have been handed out. Uh, that should be on your in front of your mm -hmm. positions. All of them have been looked at for us or not. Okay. Finance chairman says that all bills have been looked at. What they what was, yeah, I think all the additions were put on that. I looked at them this morning. Okay. I'll make a motion to go up for the consent calendar with the, with the additions to the bill sheet. Just to uh, have a quick question, where do we have an elevator? At the sewer, at the water plant. Okay. Right. Thank you. So we have a motion to approve by Councilman Knight. Do we have a second? Second. We have Ms. Stenson and second it. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed by like sign. Uh, no opposition. Motion carries unanimously. The next is the town manager's report. <clears throat> and we'll talk about some things that are important. <clears throat> <laughs> I got it. <laughs> uh, I want to touch on something now that's an issue, a problem, and get to be more and more of a problem. And I want council to go ahead to address it. Uh, the cemetery, as you know, is a sensitive area, uh, right from the show it should be. But we do have rules and regulations. Uh, and the reason we have those rules and regulations is to keep the cemetery looking like the books which is probably one of the better cemeteries in the state, <clears throat> I would say. Our guys take a lot of pride in it. They cut it every week. Um, and we'll, here's the problem. Uh, and again, it gets sensitive. But if you go back to our rules and regulations, um, they state under this section, no trees, shrubs, ivy, flowers, etc., of a permanent nature shall be planted on the lots. Cut flowers, potted plants, and artificial designs may be placed on the lots in receptacles approved by the town and may be removed when they are no longer add beauty to the lot. Um, people put things over there, they're sentimental. I understand that. Uh, plastic flowers has become a popular thing. They look fine at first, but later on they don't look good. Uh, a lot of the a lot of the uh, funeral directors don't clean up after things are done, and we've got to address it. Second section in here says debris, trash, and rubbish. <clears throat> Shall be unlawful for any person to deposit or leave paper, tin cans, broken glass, or china vessels, decayed flowers, dirt, brick, shavings, pieces of wood, or other things constituting debris, trash, or rubbish within the cemetery. A lot of times it's a matter of opinion as to what we're talking about. But what we've got is people putting trinkets and stones and pebbles and very nicely decorated. And again, this is a touchy situation. Um, the problem is we cannot maintain it. We can't weed it around. Uh, the guys are scared to death. Another popular thing are these, these solar lights. Everybody's putting solar lights out there. Well, Guys go along and we eat and break one, and this has happened. And then we get blamed for that. And they want us to replace it. It's not supposed to be there. Uh, is that a, what do you recommend that we do? What I would like to do and get council's approval is to.
publish these rules in the paper under a public notice for two weeks. Um, there's no possible way that we could contact everybody over there. Uh, it's, we could try, but I don't see how we do it. We get names off of the grave sites and try to contact the owners and you know say you need to do something about this. Um, because it is sensitive and I know it's a lot of trouble with um, trinkets and things of that nature. What I propose is we, after a period of time, we box these up and write names on them that are on the grave sites and hold on to them on the town shop. And if someone comes in and wants to know where their stuff is, we can give it. So we hold them for 30 days and then dispose of them. It's a, it's, yeah. it's a lot of trouble, but it's getting out of hand and, and we've got to do something. All okay. right. But let's specify in there that we will hold them for 30 days and then dispose of them. I would also recommend that we post the regulations at the cemetery and give the regulations to funeral directors. It's going to be a good In fact, anybody that buys a lot, well, that's the thing. They get it. They get copies of it. They get a contract. Okay. They get they get the, the rules and regulations when they buy a plot. But over a period of time, uh, people plant trees. Uh, they're not supposed to be there in bushes. And I in LA say their her daughter died. Her daughter loved this particular type of tree. It's very sentimental to her, and I understand that. I really do understand. And a lot of times we don't say anything because of that. But it's getting out of hand start to affect the way the cemetery looks. Okay, so at this time we need a motion to uh, publish, uh, make a public notice of the current uh, law, of the current regulations we have for the cemetery to run for two weeks. Uh, it's notification. Was it pretty much the uh, ordinance? Yeah, it's, yeah. it's current ordinance. Well, I just picked these two. There's, there's a lot more to the rules and regulations, but this. But that's what you have with that, is just what just, you want, just what, you, what you're concerned about, okay? All right, do we have a motion? I'll make a motion. We have a second. All right, all in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed by like sign. Motion carries. I'd like to go back way to the, I think it's really a nice idea to box up the stuff. I don't know that we can save it forever. Um, I kind of liked your idea of having some I mean, if they're, if they're visiting often, which you would think if, if they care enough to do maybe 45 days or something, just so you don't end up with boxes and boxes and boxes. And stuff. 60 days, two more. Yeah, you know, I, I just think there should be some. But of course, then that's trouble for some. Well, they just have to put a date on it periodically. I mean, I want to give everybody the yeah. opportunity and not just go on there and just wipe out everything and say, too bad. Yeah. And I'm not it. saying we throw it away at on day sister. 61. I mean, you can look at some of this, that these things on these graves and you, you know that they mean something to somebody. Or maybe just date it and then when space becomes an issue, call out the oldest, the ones that have been there longest or something. Hope, hopefully folks will see this and, and yeah. probably fuss, but you know, you got to do it. So. Put it on the Facebook page as well. Yeah. Good idea. Okay. All right. Um, we've had a rash of bad luck lately with equipment. And uh, anytime we have bad luck with equipment, it's expensive. And lately, I'm just going to run through a few of these just so you know what's going on and what kind of money we'll be spending. And this is money that we don't have any choice. Uh, we, we could sit in prove and talk about it all day, but these two things are essential to the operation of our two plants. One of them is a water plant. Um, the booster pump station that you see up here on the highway, uh, one of the, there are, there are redundant pumps in there that alternate. One of those pumps is, a shaft has failed. Um, it's got to be redone and replaced. It's about $6,000 to fix that. Uh, we are going to modify it. It's a long story, but the shaft itself, engineers have felt like that it's too long and they're going to shorten the shaft, keep it from vibrating. Um, so that's, that's in the process of being done. Right now we're running off of one pump. <coughs> that pump supplies uh, Piedmont tank. If that fails, then we cannot get them more. So it's, we've got no choice. 
Okay. What do we know, please? We've known it for about a week. Okay. The pumps on order should be here. Um, had a similar situation with pumps at the sewer plant. These are blower pumps uh, that are necessary to complete the process of uh, the final product, which is the sludge that we end up with. There are two of those down there, too, that are redundant. One failed last week, <clears throat> towards the end of the week. We tore that down, and we were in the process of trying to figure out if it's possible for us to fix that pump, uh, bearings and, and that type of thing, uh, at a cost of around a couple thousand. These things are 21 years old, and as luck would have it, this past weekend, the redundant pump failed. So both of those pumps are down right now. We made the decision today to go in and buy a new one. It's 6000 something for that, or $7,000. Um, we're going to reevaluate the one that we were working on. Um, there was another little problem with that. And if that gets up around the three dollars or $4,000 repair range, we're going to buy another pump, buy another new pump. But um, these things are 21 years old. And Typical life expectancy is 10 to 11 years, according to these, these people that are working on them. Uh, they're in a very volatile environment. So how, how much for the two pumps, the sewer pumps? It's 6,000 for the uh, booster pump station, and we're looking at probably 14,000 total if we buy two new okay. pumps at the sewer plant. So you need a motion to authorize up to $20,000 for the sewer pumps and $6,000 for the water plant? Booster. We can do that, but we, we had to have them, so we've already ordered them. <laughs> well, I understand that, but yeah, does the council have to vote on it? No, I don't think so. the funding? Okay. All right. Perfect. All right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Goes on the bill sheet. Yeah. Okay. Um, it goes back to what I tell everybody all the time. These things, you know, you, you think our sewer plant's brand new, but it's not. Um, the water plant, it's not new operates down and these are essential for operations and <clears throat> we have no choice but, but to fix them. Um, the only other thing I want to let everybody know is lead pickup will start the week of the 23rd. But we usually like to have the streets cleaned up. There's not a lot out there right now. It's still going to start at that time. When will that end? 23rd of October. It when? starts. What will it end? Uh, it depends. Okay. And yeah, my lease don't fall until mid December. I do encourage people not to wait because we've had that happen. So you you never have waited. Well, break them in the spring. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's over with. My husband bought me a new battery. I was afraid to leave the little brown. Maybe he's sweet. <laughs> <laughs> Smart, maybe. <laughs> I do have a, right now as we speak, a very large water break going on up on Main on the, uh, on the highway. I don't know if you've seen that. We're struggling with it all day and losing the water, losing was that it? right there in front of Kirk. Right, so. I did. It was, it was, you think a machine vibrate and cause happens every time you do it. Can we send a bill to be that? Yep. You can send it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, now let's, let's, let's make a, make a state case out of it. Let's send them a bill. You know, they'll say it's contracted, so you have to. You know, you have to sue the work, They work for the state. Trust me. I know. We wouldn't put that third lane in there. We probably wouldn't have broke. I hope we'll be all right. I was telling everybody earlier that we're losing pressure at the tank. They may have to cut the tank off to save it. And if they don't, then sometime around 11.30, you'll get a phone call that there's a water pressure problem and we've got a boil water nose to go out. So it's going to be a long night. Can we uh, talk to the town attorney now? Can we send them a bill? We can send them one. No one calls the state. Yeah, the question would be Yeah, the problem would be proven, and then the problem would also be, you know, them. You know, saying, well, we don't have a GDDU and put it off on the next person, put it off on the next person. They're also, uh, oh, I can't, I forget the term, but, uh, it's 
not immune, but you know what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. Certain things you can't blame them for. Mm -hmm. It's like there's certain things that people can't blame us for. Mm -hmm. Sovereign immunity. Yeah, thank yeah. you. Now, do you think with the state of Virginia, if I recall, there is a um, cap on the damages, but there are damages that you can sue them for, unlike a municipality. Um, it authorizes damages up to $100,000. Mm -hmm. But that's just me talking out of my head, but I'm pretty sure that's right. Well, what we're going to do, we're going to write them a letter when this is all said and done. We're going to figure out how much <coughs> we're We're going to send them a bill, and when they say no, that's fine, because then, then a couple of us are going to call up our buddy Frank Ruff and Tommy Wright and say, we need a special allowance from the General Assembly for $25,000 mm -hmm. or whatever it costs us to fix. Mm -hmm. yeah, that, that may or may not go through, but you never know. And then another you can't suggestion. Get them to fix a pothole. I don't know. Much less pay them to deal with these The other suggestion would be, you know, this is to put you on notice that every time you do X, Y, and Z, this occurs, you know, <coughs> it is due to your negligence. If it happens again and it breaks, we will bill you accordingly. Typically, they're tearing out man on it. You know, I've heard that yet today, but that's coming. And say you know, okay, that's on. That's on each now. We go in and mark them and say, all right, there's a manhole. Let me see. It. Okay, they're right on top of it. Knock the top right off. It happens every time they do. The right. other thing is they're not supposed to come up manholes. When they go back and repay, <laughs> you watch they'll all disappear. You call it Smith. Yeah, it might be different thing with her. Yeah, she's pretty good. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's all. Uh, just a real quick for the town manager, going back to the um, water stuff that we're we, uh, we buying, Good. right? The equipment. I, one thing we can do to prepare for the next budget cycle is to create a list of all the town assets over a certain amount of dollars, uh, and have a comprehensive list. A list of how old they are, the expected, the life expectancy, and the cost of a new one, so that we can start some sort of capital budgeting process. So we're not spending six thousand dollars here, and you know, three months later, four thousand dollars here, um, just to make the process a little more concrete. Well, we, well we, we've got money in reserve for stuff like this. Right, but that's, the, yeah. that's what we use it for. That's sure. what we have it in reserve. I, I understand having reserve money, but what I'm talking about is capital budgeting, which is well, a little different. Generally, the, the capital budgeting stuff is like for cleaning the filters in the water plant. You know, you know what I'm saying? Because that's the high side of the dollar. What the town has done in the last few years, well, how long? Wait, well, the last six, six, seven years. You know, when we purchased that, purchased that tank and that in that um, tractor, we bought. You don't, people don't realize how much money we saved the town by us cleaning these little booms out rather than hiring a contractor to do it. Sure. We saved a pile. I, and, and, and I appreciate the cost savings. What I'm just looking at is planning for the future right. with capital budgeting. No. Thank you, man. Got it. All right. So, are you done? All right. Uh, we're going to the town attorney. Yes. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Uh, this month I looked into the records. Recreational zoning that you all asked me about. I also looked into the signs and whether or not they were covered by the property maintenance code. They are not. And so, you know, as of right now, there are sign regulations with the zoning. There's one small sign ordinance in the whole code, and then really nothing about maintenance. So, something to think about there. I looked at the chicken ordinance that. Bill had written, you know, when I went out for public hearing, and then also regarding Lip Lipscomb Stratton, that project is almost nearing completion, and so just to give you all a heads up is that um, the law requires that we file petitions and condemnation within the next month after completion. And what that is is, you know, basically when this whole project started, before it all started, we either acquired all of the land that was necessary to do the improvements by an easement, 
or we had to use condemnation procedures. Um, the town is authorized to use what's called quick take procedures, which is you estimate how much the fair market value is, you deposit it in the Nottoway Courthouse. And so that is all on deposit right now. What the law requires though is within a month you have to initiate proceedings to basically pay out the landowners of the money that's been on deposit. And then the landowners may have the argument of, well, they didn't deposit the fair market value of the property. And so just to give you all a heads up, if any of your constituents call, ask what's going on, get served with papers, um, that's gonna be coming pretty soon. Okay. But some of them, you know, it's unknown heirs. We don't know who owns it. We couldn't find the people that own it. But there are a few that would not agree to the condemnation, I mean, the fair market value price that we have put on it. So those may be the issues. Those without heirs, are they paying taxes on that land? Either somebody is somewhere, or it is um, either overlooked by the tank county or it may be on the auction block and nobody's buying it. Okay. That's all. All right. Thank, thank you, you. Good deal. Now we go to the mayor's report. I don't have a formal report uh, this time around. Um, I understand that uh, you passed the charter change piece of the ordinance or the, of the package last month, but you didn't do the second piece, and I understand you were concerned about changing the ordinance without having the other piece in place. And what I was going to suggest is that we just have a motion to support the amendment to change the ordinances, but they don't take effect until 1 July 2018 when the other piece comes into play. Because once the charter change takes place, it won't take effect until 1 July 2018. So you can do the same thing. If the charter change doesn't take place, then this doesn't take place. Question. Makes sense. Right. So what I, did, what I need then is a motion to support the amendment of ordinance sections 2-179 powers and duties generally and section 2-180 chief of police and police generally to take effect on 1 July 2018 following the amendment of, of the town charter of the Virginia General Assembly. So if the town charter amendment does not take place, these other these other things don't come into effect either. Okay. I'm, I'm sorry, uh, remind me again what the, what it says specifically? Chain of command. It's just the chain of command. Oh, that's right. Like we were just ch changing the verbiage so it matches up. So that the <coughs> chief of police answers directly to the town manager. You did not want to make that change be uh, before the charter change took place. But what you're doing by doing this is that it's not going to take effect unless the charter change takes place. And it's still not going to take effect to launch a lot next year. Right. Well, my uh, my concern wasn't that. My, my concern was that I didn't want to have a discussion about having the uh, change before the charge change uh, was effective. Um, currently, I, you know, it's it's my opinion that we're simply taking the issue that we had with the um, or a similar issue that we had with. Um, that, that we addressed with the uh, charter change and redoing that issue. Because currently, we have the uh, bifurcated chain of command where the town, uh, where the police change to the reports answers. to both the mayor and the town council. Well, take the, actually, he doesn't report to town council, except normally through the mayor, as I read it. The mayor, is the, and all we're changing is the mayor piece. Anyway, but the way I read it, is that the chief police answers directly to the mayor. That's his baby. And it has been that way for years, mainly because of the, you know, the, the mayor's court thing. Uh, by having him answer to the town manager, the council and the mayor still have control. We still go to this guy right here, or the, whoever this office is, whoever's sitting in this office, I don't, I don't mean Wade, but the town manager position has to have that authority, or else you're gonna have a situation like you had before some point and the whole idea is to avoid that kind of thing and the best way to do that is to, to streamline the chain of command now 
as mayor, the mayor is still in control. He can still direct things to happen through uh, through the town manager to any department head out there. The town council the same way. Council acts and says they need the town manager to execute such and such uh, an order, then he will execute it. That's his job. I'm not, I don't necessarily agree with your assessment. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't know if either the town manager nor the police chief uh, want this uh, change. Well, my opinion is I think the town manager should have been in charge for years for some reason. I don't think an elected official should be able to be able to dedicate to the police chief. I don't believe that, well, two things. The primary responsibility of government is public safety. So public safety should be, you, you know, the, the bus stops with council when it comes to public safety. And the mayor. Right. The mayor's in terms the of the day-to-day. -day, and the town manager. He's got in, in, in terms of day-to-day. Um, operations and investigations and things of that nature, I believe that the police chief should not necessarily answer to someone who may not necessarily have um, that experience or that expertise. Well, they do it all the time. Every mayor that you, you haven't had any mayor with any uh, police experience. That's been going on for years. And then one of the problems we've had in the past too is sometimes mayors will insert themselves into the police department business because they are mayor and they have that control of that authority. They have, they have abused their authority in some cases. We've seen it. Yeah. And what we need to do is stop that. It stops, it can stop now with this. You still have oversight. The mayor still has oversight. But what this does is have somebody that's on duty every day that will hold that chief of police responsible for his job. Okay, but, but again, and I don't want to speak for the town manager, but it's my understanding that neither individual impacted wants this change. Well, I don't want to speak to the town manager either, but I don't think he has a vote. Good point. <laughs> <laughs> Motion's on the floor, right? We so have I a do. motion, I don't have a second. You got a second. second. All right. So we have a motion, we have a second. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed by like sign. No. All right, motion carries. Thank you. I understand where you're coming from. Uh, thank you for your input. All right. Um, That's all I had. Yes, ma'am. Yes, and I apologize. I did have one more thing to add to yes, my report. Thank you. That is regarding the source water protection plan. Mm -hmm. I have done a little bit more research at council's request. There is, There are um, additional resources that council can contact I can whoever can to get more assistance on it um, the Virginia Department of Health offers a contact person that's on their website that you can contact for assistance in addition um, you all had asked me to look into what are some of the different regulations that different partnerships and authorities have and some of those regulations, and I looked specifically at the one that was the Potomac Partnership and regulated the land use on the Potomac. And what they looked at was setbacks, and there were tons of regulations. These are just specifically addressing the concerns that have been raised before. There have been setback regulations. There are regulations with um, sewage disposal and septic tank installing and, um, you know, development regulations on the bodies of water, um, construction regulations on the bodies of water. And it does implicate several different federal laws with the EPA that are carried out by the Virginia Department of Health. And, um, so, and by the DEQ. So, just to give you all a little bit more information on that. Based on what I was reading from the minutes, do I need to go talk to the county about this? What the Department of Health's recommendation is, and 
some of it's a little bit sloppy, I think. I don't necessarily think it all needs to be done, but we definitely need to get the county on board however we need to do it. Um, unless we're gonna end up having to take it by eminent domain. And I'd like, you know, we need to explore all avenues before we even get there. And the easiest avenue for us to explore is seeing if the county will do this, will they do the setback re regulations that are required, will they regulate the, you know, sewage disposal, the septic tank construction, things like that, because we really need the county to do that. Do you have a recommended regulation and if we can go to the county and say we need this done? I don't at this point, but I can. If you can give me something that I can walk into them and say that we need this done. Sure. Can we do it like an emergency thing? Because they're starting to build houses all across the lake. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We would need to, I can get you all something pretty quickly. The quicker the better. Uh, and I need to work with weight on that because I don't, you know, know right. them. I don't know if they've had their meeting this month yet, uh, but we'll get it to them. Okay. And uh, we'll, we'll walk it down there. And Make sure everybody gets covered. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. All right. Uh, at this time, we're going to committee reports and infrastructure. Other than that, big water break, our man's work. Finance. No report. <laughs> First down. No report. I mentioned and don't find where they all know the officers. But oh, yeah. Advertising. Mr. Sawyer is going to Oh, really? Oh. We're advertising. Sawyer is going to take the job at the Sheriff's Department. We're training money to do the office. It seems like it's what we're doing. Volunteer services. Uh, yes, I don't know if anybody noticed it, but the um, in the park, the gazebo, yes. it has a new roof on it. Thanks to the wash bucket initiative, they they finalized that uh, this week. They finished it today. Today, I think. Right. Yeah, they finished it today. Okay. They got a deal. They put a metal one on there. Or change. Uh, green metal. Green. green. And the um, chamber dinner is coming up November third at the uh, community center. All letters will be sent out tomorrow inviting all businesses and anybody that wants to come. Okay. That's the Saturday, right? Friday. Friday. Friday night. Friday night. Friday night. Friday. November 3rd. Okay. Community okay. center. Good. All right. Economic development. Oh, uh, thank you, Mayor. Uh, I'm going to use my committee time to talk about uh, VML. Uh, I just returned from the VML oh, conference yeah. this last week. Um, I did give a presentation on Crew's uh, HEAL efforts. Uh, it was part of a part of a panel. Um, you have in front of you the uh, legislative agenda that was passed by VML. Um, so those are the uh, legislative priorities and other uh, other issues that they'll be uh, advocating for in. Oh, I'm sorry. Advocating for uh, in the uh, in the general assembly session. Uh, another point of. Um, but interest that, that came out of the uh, VML uh, session. VML has recently partnered with the National League of Cities um, such that all localities under a certain population uh, are now receive uh, membership to the National League of Cities. Uh, and cities is, is a misnomer. It's, a, it's really any you know, town, city, county, and such. Um, so we are now members of the National League of Cities, which is the national equivalent of uh, VML, uh, which there are certain benefits to that uh, and resources we can, we can tap into. What is San Francisco and New York and driving in general? I am not sure. Okay. I'm not sure how many uh, votes they get compared to, uh, to the rest. Um, I met. Uh, well, I, I went to one uh, one presentation given by uh, Dana Stratt, who is the um, executive director of the uh, uh, Virginia Association of Chiefs of Police, uh, and she did mention, um, you know, when she found out that it was Crew that uh, that she likes Crew, and she's actually used Crew's uh, previous social media efforts in her um, uh, presentations as positive examples of, of things that we uh, we can do. 
So I would recommend that um, now that the town manager has control over the police department, that the town manager uh, might want to instruct the uh, police department to uh, pursue more social media efforts. Um, and finally, um, as part of the uh, part of the way VNL uh, funds the um, uh, the conference is through various vendors and such, um, you know, set up booths and things. And, uh, in order to entice people to come over and so they can try to sell you things, they all have uh, various giveaways uh, that you just drop a business card in, and at the end of the uh, end of the conference, they'll pull out business cards and. Uh, whatever they're giving away, they get, well, they, they pulled out uh, my business card for, or one of them did, uh, and I'm going to go ahead and give the uh, give this to the town. Um, so the town of Crew is now the proud owner of its very own. Yeah, no, no and, uh, and I also went out and uh, ran by the owners on the way in today and ruined my own contribution. Thank you, Phil. So, uh, so, I'm sure the town employees will put some money in the hole. Can you bring your hole for it? We're doing healthy eating. You should have fired that thing up, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Every council meeting. Right, right, exactly, and that's all I have. People will show up, <laughs> <laughs> unless my uh, co-chair has anything to add. Uh, no, no. <laughs> all right, thank you, sir. Uh, I didn't put any continuing business on here because I didn't have the minutes, so I wasn't sure whether whether there was anything that needed to be continued at this point. Is there anything that anybody wants to break up? Uh, uh, just a couple things, Mayor. Yes, sir, um, if we can make sure that we advertise for the water rates, uh, so that we can vote on them in the next uh, at the next meeting. And then um, the uh, sign ordinance now that the town attorney informs us that it's not part of the um, building code, um, we would need to advertise um, for that. Um, and if you'll recall, the, uh, the sign ordinance basically, it's a lot of wording uh, speaking to um, how this isn't impacting uh, 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 free speech. That it's only, but the uh, the main crux of it is that it would require um, uh, individuals um, to have to, to maintain signs and then uh, mechanisms for the town to um, go after them if they don't maintain signs. Okay. Do we have that wording? Mm -hmm. Okay. okay. Yeah. Right. So I would advertise for a public hearing or move that we advertise for a public hearing. Uh, for that ordinance. So we have a motion on the floor. Well, we have a motion we have a second. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second to uh, advertise a sign ordinance that would basically require maintenance of signs that are included into the building or, or building ordinance. All right, all in favor say aye. 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 All yeah. opposed by like sign. All right, motion carried. It's supposed to do the water on the school. Water rates. That was already in. Didn't we do that? That's, That's already in. Right. Yes. Okay. Anything else? Did we approve to advertise it last time and then just not advertise it? I'm just curious. <coughs> I think I think I think we need the verbiage. The verbiage that didn't go. Okay. Uh, okay. Any new business? You could you could contact with the state in with that anyway. With water rights. Um that part of it, yes. What he's talking about is uh, proposed increase to out of town rates. Right, and increase to yeah. in town rates. Right, that's correct. Right. Um, I'll, if, if no one else has new business, I have a couple pieces of new business. Go ahead. Um, the town manager and I met today with uh, Hurt and Profit um, on what is maybe a very large. Um, multi-phased uh, initiative over the next uh, several years, um, basically with three goals, to um, purchase the town park, to uh, renovate the division headquarters, the division office, and to create a, um, uh, a crosswalk, across, uh, a safe crossing across 460, um, as well as some other issues that are impacted at economic development, uh, recreation, things, things of that nature. Um, 
basically what we're looking at in, if I forget anything, wait, just to feel free to jump in, um, is asking Hurt and Profit to... Um, Buy the money? Well, to, yes, to, no. to apply for what's called the VDOT TAP grant, Transportation Alternative Program Grant. Um, which um, they have an expert who uh, who met with us as well um, from Prince Edward County. She was um, someone who did a lot of these grants before her her profit hired her. her um, who advises us? Who advised us that a rails to trails program? Um, and this because this tap grant is was originally intended to. Um, renovate and restore old surface transportation facilities uh, like train stations or headquarters and things like that that we have a good shot of, uh, of getting us. Okay. Um, phase one would be to look at this Rails to Trails program and um, it's essentially create a, a plan, a, a master plan uh, with all the engineering and, uh, and things associated with that. Um, it's an 80-20 um, it's a 20% match. Um, the uh, funding would cover 80% of it. Um, we're, they advise us to ask for up to $300,000, which there is the potential for in-kind uh, contributions. Um, so all of our 20% could be met by in-kind, um, which there's a lot of finagling that can help us in navigating through all of this. Um, the deadline for the grant is November 1. Okay. <laughs> so... <laughs> you talking about Next what? year? This year? This year. Oh, and then the, uh, the, the next time this money is available. And, and again, it's an 80-20% match. Um, but that money will help us purchase that too from... Well, this, this money would be for the plan. Mm -hmm. And then identifying other resources, including a DCR grant. Mm -hmm. But with the, D, the so the DCR grant would allow us to purchase the uh, the park. Is that the land bank? Yes. Okay. Right. Which is a 50-50. Yeah. Right. But but with this funding, we can also use some of that funding for our 50% match of the DCR grant. So essentially, we'd be looking at the cost of, uh, of uh, the, the grant application um, and potentially up to $60,000 um, if, we, if we get the grant um, and don't have any in-kind contributions. Uh, so that's phase one and then phase two would be, would be expanding on that. Um, we are under no obligation if we get the grant to actually accept the grant. Um, so if we uh, hire this uh, this individual um, to write the grant for us. She does all the uh, all the research, all the legwork. Um, writes the grant. We decide not to get it. We're only at the uh, cost of this uh, this individual. Um, through her profit. Through her profit, right? Uh, and then we still have access to all those uh, those documents that she she used, right? Um, and we can revisit it in the future. But at this point. Uh, I would need a two. Um, What's the bottom line on her? Uh, Thirty-five hundred dollars. Okay. Um, which it occurred to me uh, driving up here that not only can we sell it, it's uh, thirty-three hundred dollars for the industrial park survey. Mm. So if we actually collect on on debts owed by the uh, by the county, it would cost us two hundred dollars uh, additional. Um, um, so I would uh, I would need two um, uh, motions. Thank you. Motions. One is to uh, to pass a resolution to uh, apply for the Virginia Tourism uh, sorry Virginia Transportation Alternative Program grant. Uh, in an amount not to exceed three hundred thousand dollars. 
and I'll make that much. That's sixty thousand dollars out for it. Well, if we were to if we were to move forward, move forward with it. Right now, the main thing is um, y'all authorized having her apply for it. Right. Well, does this thirty five hundred dollars include the meeting y'all had today? Because I know he didn't come in and real. Okay, we have a motion on the floor by Mr. Miskovic. Do we have a second? Second. We have a second. Is there any further discussion? Is it feasible to for her or him or whoever's writing the grant? They, can they write it in time? Yes, she uh, she indicated that she would need to know as soon as possible given the right. deadline. But uh, when if this came about when I um, yeah I, I recommended that we look into a planning grant from the um, uh, Brownfield. Uh, Redevelopment uh, grant fund funding yeah. source, um, and my my issue was I didn't know how much a plan would cost, so we uh, we reached out to Current Profit just to see how much a plan would cost, and they said, oh well, there's this grant available that's perfect for that situation. Yeah, they, if according to them, it fits right in with what TAP does. Right. Have and we got a price on the property for the, for the park. We do not. We do not. But uh, the the and that I need. I was going to bring that up actually. Um, the assessed value is one hundred thousand. Okay, one hundred like one hundred one. Uh, my question. I was getting some feedback uh, earlier, and I guess uh, what does council want to do? Do you want me to write to Norfolk and Southern and say this is the price tag that we're assessing that you're asking, or do we want them to tell us a price because they haven't told us a price for the land? Now, another thing that we discussed is... Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Sure. We have a motion on the floor. Oh, yeah, sure. let's, let's, yeah, let's take the motion. Okay. Uh, we have a motion and a second uh, to pass a resolution to apply for the Virginia VTAP grant. Go with the Virginia TAP grant. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed by like sign. Okay. All right. So that motion carries. Okay. Then the next motion would be to... Well, I get, do, do we need a motion for $3,500? I think that's... Do. do we need a motion for her yeah. profit? Yeah. That's what we just did. Yeah, oh, right. yeah. I mean, <coughs> that's that's right. Right. Yeah. we really don't need any uh, okay. motions because what what this is, and the reason I like this saying is, and, and there was some confusion in the meeting to me, maybe Bill picked up on more than I did about the actual price of the land. What I heard from her was. You have to take these things in steps, mm -hmm. and you know, uh, just sitting and listening to this lady, you can tell she's done this many, many times. And what's her name? Uh, Sharon. Sharon begins with a C. That's all right. Well, well, well. No. <laughs> but um, C. The good the thing too is we we sit and talk about that railroad building all the time, mm -hmm. and the, the part that it's attracting to me among other things is fix it is we need somebody to go in there and like current property and that's what they'll do with this grant money and say here's what you need to do to fix it. Mm -hmm. And they'll, they'll pay for that. Mm -hmm. So the other things are important too and, and she said bringing in the rails and trails and all that is, is, is possible. We said well wouldn't it have to, Merkel would have to prove it too and she said no you can go around and around the, the place and come back to it. Which I didn't, I didn't know that. So there's, there's some opportunities there to do something with the building. And she, she knows ways to leverage the money. Very much so. Um, so one thing she, well, what, one thing we, we discussed was the possibility of if we were to get one of these grants, if Norfolk Southern would donate the ball field, leverage that as an in-kind donation for. They might leverage, or they might donate up to fifty percent. In their letter, they said they're not do they don't donate any more land. Basically, but if we can up to fifty k, they might donate the other hand. The other thing, the land grant money would hit that fifty k. Right. And I don't want to go on all night, but something else that you mentioned caught got my attention. Uh, we're talking about asbestos abatement. Yeah. She said, "Well, you know, you can go back to the railroad and say they gave you property with asbestos." Knowing that there was an issue, oh, there they're go. responsible. Well, there you go. There you go. Then it's, that's a, it's a it's a car. Yeah, that's a car. Perfect. I like that. She also mentioned squatting rights. That was another thing. 
Um, it was. We've been using that land for over 15 years. Yeah. And Norfolk Southern hasn't said anything or indicated any other. They've been accepted. Right. So that may be an avenue of call. Well, yeah. I, I said that well, you really don't want to do this. Literally, been there since 1959. Right. So a lot, of, a lot came out of this meeting. That's um, yeah. very beneficial. But the community was using that ball field, uh, the old in the yeah. ball field where it sits since the 30s. Man, you made my night. Thank you all. <laughs> it's good work. Thank you. Thank you. All right. I think you'd wait. Anything else? Um, I did reach out to the Department of uh, Housing and Community Development um, just to express an interest in having them come in and explain, basically give a give a primer on um, light reduction, what what the processes it are, the uh, the steps that we can take, the various opportunities that we're not taking advantage of, that the, the resources that we can um, look into. Um, have, uh, I received a response back from the individual email you sent me to, I guess it's her subordinate, who has not yet responded, but it's the first day after a holiday, I only sent the email on Friday. Um, so they may be, it's, it sounds like they're willing to come in and do that for us if uh, if town staff and council and the mayor want to um, yeah. learn more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bring them in. Bring them in for council meeting. Yeah. Perfect. And yeah. then my last piece of new business, I think, yes, is a, included in your packet. Um, it's a resolution. Behind the bill sheet. Right in front of the budget. Yeah. Ah, there it is. A uh, resolution in support of the Harris Memorial, Memorial Armory renovation and preservation. Um, as you know, there's a, uh, a nonprofit organization in the town of Blackstone that is working <coughs> to um, renovate and preserve um, a landmark that, um, if, uh, if completed, uh, would have um, economic benefit for the uh, for the entire region. <coughs> this just encourages um, our support. Um, this is our support. Town councils in favor. That Blackstone Town Council is in favor of that. Blackstone Town Council is gauging public opinion why, which is why this is okay. This comes out. What does the Blackstone Mayor say? Uh, I'm not sure of his position. I believe he's his position is council should not make a decision either way. That's right, but, but we, the, the, the town of crew are stakeholders in this uh, regional initiative. Concern should be who we might be upsetting in Blackstone. It should be what is best for our citizens here in Peru as stakeholders in this initiative. Okay, so how does this help citizens of town Peru? If uh, it, it, it's uh, <coughs> mentioned in the uh, in their um, Uh, historical and cultural centers of activity in the sure. town of Blackstone directly benefit the town of Crew economically and culturally, and vice versa. That's a good point. Brings people in. Exactly, and brings people in, the and and the, uh, the the main economic assets of uh, not anything in Ottawa County are uh, uh, history for the uh, for the tourism aspect and the uh, the the culture, the quaint downtown feel. <coughs> so anything that protects and preserves those. Uh, okay. We have why, why, is, why, is town, why is town of Blackstone on the fence about it? They don't know which way. I mean, they got money involved. Money involved something like that. That's what I think. Right. I mean, they're scared they, they, they want to be chunking out some money. Well, it, the town of Blackstone owns the other owns the property. Okay, we have a motion. We have a second. Second. 
right, I have a motion and a second. Do we have any further discussion? At this time, we have a, a motion on the floor and a second to pass a resolution in support of the Harris Memorial Armory Recreation and Preservation uh, effort. All in favor, say aye. Aye. Uh, all opposed, by like sign. No opposed. Motion carries unanimously. Thank you. That's all for me, Mac. All right. Good. Um, backing up a minute. Am I to understand now that the council wants me to take no action as far as engaging Norfolk and Southern? I say you do what you got to do. Well, I think we yeah, should pursue the grant opportunities and see where that goes. Um, I, and I, I, you can't pursue the price if you want we, to do that. We do need a price. Okay. We, we, I, unless I'm, I, I, I can't think of any reason why we shouldn't have a price. Okay. So you want me to write them a letter and ask what the price is? Steve, you can't get fired. Then, so you, <coughs> I think the price was that hard to eat. It's what? Apparently, they don't think so. Oh, we're going to buy it? If they say 100000 are we going to go? Well, buy that's it? what this grant's going to do. Part of this grant will provide us money. One right. of the things they said they would do in the last letter that we got from Norfolk Southern, which I think I was in your package, yeah. they basically <laughs> said that we're going to give you time to find grant money. So, what I can do is update them, tell them that we're pursuing several avenues for grant money, but we need a price. I would also have some sort of a lease or contract whereby they don't sell it to anyone else until they for a person person nobody wants it. Right. No, nobody's going to want to. I was one of those ladies' questions today. Well, who would want to buy a ball field? Well, that, 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 and take away the kids' ball field. The thing is, as far as I'm concerned, if they buy the ball field, they get that damn building too. It's all as best as so. Um, so, all right, so what we'll do, I'll follow up then with a letter asking the price and, and uh, making sure they're right uh, now. There was another element that I was thinking of and we had discussed it in the past. Now, November 11th is coming up here. We're in the 100th anniversary year, 1917, World War One. Do you want to uh, maybe rededicate the crew municipal park, sometimes called Hagberg Park, as, <laughs> as the Veterans Memorial right. Park? Yeah. You step on all the toes you want to. Well, the judge, there was, make your hands there was a judge in Charlottesville that just made a ruling that said that the current law protects all veterans' memorials. But yeah. would we be violating our lease agreement by changing the inherent nature of the park to. It's still a park. It's a memorial it's park. So it's park. Yeah, yeah. I, that's something we can look into, but, but it's still a park. I think we have some good opportunities. Let's kind of leave it alone okay. until we see right. where we are. And Just ask it. You, you don't get, <laughs> these, you do get, you get these opportunities <laughs> on the Memorial Day and Veterans Day. So, I, mean, just, I yeah. say we do it because well, they have a program. Memorial Day will be here before you know. You have a program where you're going to speak and all that. I can't. We can. I can give you a whole lot. I know. I said on it the last time. When they did I'll bring a chair this time. There you, there you <laughs> go. I'll keep it short. I'll give you a break. 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 I'll give whether yeah, Grace well, will fit in his uniform or not. Well, I'm not going to fit in his uniform. I can wear the mail. Although you buy tight with yours, too, so yeah, you got a lot of room to get tight. Uh, <laughs> I have no problem with having a program. Okay. Um, 20 minutes to be brief, but a formative well, program. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I can make it brief, but there's no need to do it unless we're not, we're not going to dedicate it uh, necessarily. Unless well, we honor our World War One guys. All of them, actually. That's what Veterans Day is for. All right. Um, yeah. Do what you want to do, Craig. We stand behind you. What, what, what song was that? <laughs> stand behind you. They said don't do nothing. All right. All right. Good enough. Uh, recreational zoning ordinance. Yes. Do we have to have an ordinance before we can do recreational zoning? We have to have an ordinance. I looked into it. I would not advise it. Let's uh let's table it again. Okay. We have uh, other no problem. I just had there was questions that I had out that and it and brought them up. Okay and um, good. All right. So where are we? Points of personal privilege. Mr. Miskamek. Uh, just encourage everyone to come out and vote on election day, which I believe occurs before next uh, next meeting. Okay. No vote seven. Please vote. Mr. Knight. Had nothing for you, sir. Mr. Stinson. 
Mr. Fox. Nothing. Mr. Sisk. Mr. Reed. No privilege here. Okay. Privileges for everybody. Very good. Now we end up with our public comment element again. We have one at the beginning, one at the end. Do you have any public comments you wish to make? I have a question. Yes, ma'am. What is the building? That, what's the Harris? It's a it's a old armory, uh, Virginia armory uh, that was I think it went back to before the guard. Did it go back? Nineteen thirty six. Nineteen thirty six. So it was during the Virginia National Guard. Do you period. know where Bevel's Hardware is? Oh, so you're talking about Blackstone? Yes, ma'am. Oh, I know where it is. It's across from the tavern. Yeah. yeah. Right. That's what you just played basketball something. games. Yeah. Uh, well, that, that that's that's different than what we were talking about earlier, which is the division headquarters, which is in the park. That's behind Dollar General. Right. Right. That brick. Oh, that building. <laughs> that brick. That right. That's the one we're hiring. The the right the and what's the, the, res the resolution was simply to support, get, offer our support for the preservation efforts of the, of the armory. Right. Okay. So we're hoping to restore that building behind rather than tear it down. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. That's, that's what we're because of the historic nature of it. Okay. Very good. No public comments, and we move on to executive session. Uh, at this time, I need an executive session for property. Uh, so I need a motion to adjourn an executive session consistent with Virginia State Code 2.2-3711-A-2. Which is property. Is property and is that property? anything else? Prospective business. Okay. And prospective business, so uh, three and five. No personal I don't really think that would do it all. If you need to talk personnel, you can talk it up. Thank you for your time. All right. Do we have a motion? So moved. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed like sign. Switch. Right. At this time, I need to certify that we didn't discuss anything in executive session or. Right. It's closed session, right? That's the term now. The yeah, other way. At this time, I need to certify that uh, we did not discuss anything in closed session that was not authorized by Virginia State law. Mr. Miskovic? Yes. Mr. Knight? Yes. Mr. Stinson? Yes. Mr. Foss? Yes. Mr. Sis? Yes. Mr. Reed? Yes. Okay. All certified. Uh, at this time, I need a motion. Is that correct? i got to have a motion to approve, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So yeah. That's no good. Good. All, right. All right. So we're good. You can have a motion to adjourn. That's it. <laughs> oh, did, did, did we need to formalize it? Second. <laughs> no. Okay. Ain't all people. All right, second and agree. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Sisk and Mr. Reed have made a motion to second to adjourn. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed by like sign. So.